Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and I'm here with our very special guest, Nick Vale. Nick, great Thank to you. see you again. And Happy to be here. Oh, yeah, and we're here to kind of like to explain to the world how absolutely nothing is up to us. We do not have a free will. Okay, this is episode number 194. The title is Being Gay, Free Will, and the 2016 Presidential Election. The theme of this show is it like... A lot of politicians, especially on the Republican side, conservatives and all, they will like blame gays for being uh, gay. They will deprive gay, the gay community of certain rights, like visitation rights when, when one of them is in the hospital and stuff, and marriage rights and all. And this is extremely unfair. It, it's like discriminatory. And basically, we're going to talk about how these presidential nominees on both sides, on the Republican and the Democrat side, should be talking about this. This, this shouldn't be an issue. You know, basically, they should say they, that because gays do not have free will, we should not be discriminating against them. All right, so Nick, before we get into this, as we ordinarily do, let's define what we mean by free will, explain why we don't have it, and then let's just briefly go into why this topic is so important. So people who believe in free will believe that you are the conscious first causer, originator of your thoughts, actions, and deeds. And because they believe you have free will, they think you could have done otherwise in all your affairs. And it's important because if you could have done otherwise, then the theory goes that you are also fundamentally, truly, and deeply morally responsible. And it, it has a lot to do with judging morality. And, and on the other hand, if you do, uh, George and I also you know, know that if you don't have free will, then you could not have done otherwise. And then it doesn't make any logical sense to blame someone or actually or praise someone. So, you know, that's where the, it's really about moral ultimate moral, ultimate and fundamental moral judgment. Excellent. All right. Another way to define free will is like it's it, defining it in terms of what it's not. In other words, like a puppet or a robot does not have free will because it's completely programmed. You know, what a puppet and a robot and a computer does is not up to the, the puppet or robot or computer, okay? It's fully programmed. Well, we human beings are simply organic puppets, robots, whatever you want to call it. We don't have any more free will than does a computer or a robot or, or a puppet. So, okay, so that's, that's excellent. Right, and, and again, like, so like, we could not have done otherwise, just one, one point, a full about, I think, 85% of modern day philosophers accept that we could not have done otherwise, yet they continue to, um, to hold on to this free will term and belief in order to blame people that they know, you know, you know um, their behaviors really weren't up to them. All right, so now, Nick, why, why is this, why is this um, our world overcoming this uh, belief so important? Well, as kids, we were always taught honesty is the best policy. And it's quite obvious to believe that honesty is nicer, honesty is more compassionate, honesty is cleaner, you know, it's kinder, it's gentler. You, I think it's important because I personally don't want to live on a planet. I don't know if I'm allowed to. Cur I don't. I don't no, want everybody this, BSing. This, like BSing is right. better. Actually, you can curse, but not. I say, but, <laughs> I, I, whatever. I don't. I don't like living on a planet where everybody's just bullshitting to each other about you know praise and blame and especially the deep hatred, the deep blame. The revengeful, avengeful, pernicious, vicious hatred that goes on. And I believe, and George does, that it comes from the uh, free will belief. After all, you could have risen above your genetics and environment and overrode that nature and nurture and done with your free will a good thing. And because people believe in free will, they think you could have done otherwise. And it's important because... George and I believe there'll be a lot, a lot less hateful world once we overcome the illusion of free will. Excellent. And like, don't take our word for it, okay? It's not important just because we're saying it's important. Um, John Searle, the 13th most cited philosopher in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, you know, post-1900 philosophers cited by others, 
basically he, according to him, for our world to overcome this illusion of free will would be, I quote, a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein or Copernicus or Galileo or Newton or Darwin. It would alter our whole conception of our relation with the universe, end quote. That's how big this is. Excellent. Okay, so now, Nick, let's, um, let's frame the discussion, the, the gay rights, the, the 2016 political um, mm -hmm. campaign. What, what happened at a Ben Carson um, um, rally recently? Well, he was at a rally, and some woman at his rally accosted him and yelled at him and said, do you believe I chose to be gay? And I overheard, or the camera overheard Ben Carson say, that's a very uh, long conversation, it's complicated. And I researched it a little further, and Ben Carson had said that he has evidence that it's not genetics because he knows for sure that he's met people who have been heterosexual, who became, who went to jail and became gay, and he also knows gay people who became straight. And the fact that you can change your mind and change proves to him that it's a choice. Now, I don't want to, I'll let you, how silly is that logic? Yeah. So Ben Carson is saying he knows for, for you know, he's met people that, well, he told the woman at the rally, it's a very long conversation. And then I Googled it. I didn't tell you, it's I Googled it later about an interview with him. And he said, because people have changed their minds about it, it proves that it's a choice. Okay, now, Ben Carson. I could go on and on. But right. He is an MD, right? He's a, what is it, a neuro um, physician? He's a, yeah. I think, neuro. Um, Brain surgeon. Neurosurgeon. Yeah, neurosurgeon. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, uh, as a God, neurosurgeon. God, if anybody should get this, should be him. As a neurosurgeon, he, he knows one thing. He knows that we are, like, influenced by our genetics a lot. So in other words, like this free will thing about, it's not just about com being completely compelled by our genes and envir environment. Even if we're somewhat influenced by our genes in a certain way, that negates free will, that re refutes free will. But his being a doctor, his being an MD, he fully knows that human behavior is the result not just of, nat of nature or our genes, but of our environment, and he should fully know that our environment is not up to us. We don't get to choose who our parents are. For example, like with this gay thing, if our parents, you know, like, let's say, you know, one of, one of them, like, wanted a daughter instead of a, a son, gets a son, so dresses this son, like, with, with, with feminine, you know, clothes, or, like, has this, this, this son kind of, like, play with, with, with dolls or something. These are the kinds of environmental influences that and nobody can control and can mold and explain why a person might become gay or not. So like when Carson says that, you know, that a person can choose, he's completely ignoring this well, environment. Well, a person can change. He knows for a fact, I think he said, I've even met people who used to be gay and who are now straight and vice versa. So he's saying you're not born to be gay. You're not just wired. You can make a choice. But he's confusing the word choice. You know, just because we make a choice doesn't give us free will it's still completely determined by nature and nurture. And just because we change, I mean, people change all the time. They go from young to old, they, they get married, they, they change jobs, they change nationality, they change religions. Uh, you know, there's all, God has changed, laws of nature are changed. Change is an inherent fabric of the universe. A meteorite goes from here to here, an asteroid cr crashes into this asteroid and blows up. And the, obviously an asteroid, traveling in space that crashes into another one changes. Does an asteroid have free will? Absolutely So not. just because Ben Carson says people can change, that doesn't give them free will. People change all the time about everything. We used to have uh, slavery. We changed our, We used to think the world was flat. We changed our mind. We used to think Earth was the center of the universe. We changed our mind on that. So just because there's change doesn't give you free will. So I don't know what uh, you know, what that means that people change, therefore it's, I hear you know. Before we get into yeah. why our poli politicians are basically shirking their responsibility to be truthful and lead the, co the country in the best way, let's explain why this, this concept, this law of cause and effect, you know, basically explains why change is not okay, under Okay, but the Republican control. candidates or whoever believes in free will, they're not you know, shirking their responsibility. They actually believe in free will. They believe what they're saying. I don't think they're lying to us. Well, actually, I think Ben Carson deeply believes that being gay is a choice, a free choice. Okay. I don't think he's shirking. I don't, I don't want to. You may be making right. it sound like they're, oh, we secretly know there's no free will, but we're going to tell. I think they actually believe this Nick, nonsense. You may be right. right. You're right. And that's good that we're being generous toward them, giving them the benefit of the doubt. 
But some of them, for example, like with climate change denial, I would guess that some of these politicians, you know, trust the science, but their job depends on them not kind of like staying silent about it. So like, again, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of like give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they don't understand, but let's explain it well, for like them. Well, like I just want to quote you one. You said, never expect someone to get something or understand something whose salary depends on them not getting it. Exactly. That's a very good rule of thumb. Exactly. All right. So, like, Great, we, so why why do we change, and why are these changes not fundamentally up to us? It's because of this law of cause and effect. Let's say you have a gay person who suddenly becomes, uh, you know, becomes straight, who si suddenly decides to become straight. Okay, that's a change, but is that change freely willed? No. And why isn't it freely willed? Because like everything that happens has a cause. So there's a cause to his changing from being gay to being straight, and then there's a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause, and these causes are going back in time, moment by moment, and you have this chain of cause and effect regressing back to before this person was born. So events, you know, the universe, events that, that happened before this person was born in a causal manner, cause and effect manner, are actually determining what this person does. It's not his free will in any manner. Right, so for example, if you're straight or heterosexual and you're not in jail, and then you go to jail and you're surrounded by men all the time, that's a change of environment, which is dependent on the environment before, why you committed that crime, and the environment before that, how you were raised, and your genetics interacting with the environment. So it's no wonder to me why a lot of, I mean, a lot of guys, I don't want, you know, speak for myself, whatever. If I went to jail, I probably, you know, there were, there were no women there. So I still probably wouldn't be gay because I don't, you know, I'm just saying a change of environment. And then if, when you get out of jail, he, you could go from gay to straight again because now your environment has changed and you're back around women. So that doesn't mean free will. What is really illuminating and highlighting is the pleasure principle. Exactly. Which you have no control over also. So... Exactly. Right. You Let want me... to get the most pleasure out of life. So when you go to jail, if you want to have some companionship and some sexual companionship, whatever, and you're only surrounded by men, that's probably more fun than, I mean, that's, you know, you're, you're, you want to optimize your pleasure. Exactly. Principle. It's yeah. not just pleasure. It's like an emotional need for connection. Yeah, for Let me just make okay, one brief statement about that. But I really want to return our focus to like, fine, these these politicians may be innocent in the sense that they don't understand this, but, but I think I want to talk about how actually they're being negligent in not exploring it in more detail and understanding it, because I think it's their responsibility to do that. With, with, um, with, the, with the prison population, according to the research, according to the, the, the findings, when men go into prison, you know, there's very few that actually become gay. You know, the, there's very few of them. With women, it's a very different story. With women, a lot of women that go to prison become gay, I guess because women have much more of a need for emotional intimacy, physical intimacy, than do men. And so that explains it. In other words, like, it's not up to their free will. Like you were saying, it's the conditions of it's prison. It's a change of environment. Exactly. All which right. is dependent on the prior environment, how they got themselves into jail in the first place, depend on that environment. Exactly. All right. Let's return okay. to the politicians. So okay. again, Fine. we're going to be, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say they don't understand, you know, Carson doesn't understand that our behavior is not simply determined by our genes, it's also determined by our environment, but neither our genes and our environment are up to us. We don't have a free will. He should understand this. You know, we, we can't yeah, let but he's clouded by his deep, the, the religious right, which he's a right conservative, you know, they're so religious. And as you know, George, every major world religion, except for ours that we're starting, you know, believes, maybe Calvin, whatever, believes in free will. So you've got dueling, dueling paradigms for uh, Ben Carson. He's a neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon, so he should understand everything's neurobiological and chemical. But on the other hand, he was raised, I don't know if he's Catholic or Christian, it really doesn't matter. It's a free will, deeply, deeply held belief that he grew up with, probably idolizing his father and his mother. His parents told him to go to church. He, you know, everyone likes to listen to their parents, make them proud. And he went to minister after minister, pastor after speech, and he believes in free will because his religion has clouded his, you know, his neurobiology. So, Nick, I'm glad you explained that. So essentially okay. what you're doing is you're absolving Ben Carson. Yeah, I don't for, think they're lying. I think they all believe no, deeply. But even, but even if they're negligent, even if they're like they have a responsibility for understanding that nobody has a free will it's like part of their job if you're a doctor yeah you have, you have a responsibility to, to know what you're doing if you're a politician yeah. you have, but like what you're doing is you're absolving him so what we're saying what you're saying is like 
all right, fine, he doesn't get it, and he is being negligent. We're not going to blame him. Right, We're not going to blame them because he doesn't have any more free will than any of us. But that doesn't, that doesn't excuse his, in other words, like that um, with, with justice, with, with our rules and laws, not having a free will does not mean that we can do anything we want without consequences. So to the extent that he wants to continue ignoring this issue, you know, basically presenting to the American people, for, not just him, because we got to get into the other politicians. He's not the only one who feels this way. So like, to the extent he does that, we need to call him out on it. Because like, the only way he's going to change is like, if we we're as, one reason we don't have free will, we're hardwired to seek pleasure, avoid pain, to right. respond to reward and punishment. So if we're calling him out on it, and if the media, if, if journalists, you know, basically, you know, begin to call him out on this, he will have much more incentive to go to the research, to, to, to explore the, the, um, the issue in enough detail to come up with the right answer. Well, I want to go on record saying I would leave the Republican primaries and Republican debates alone because they're never going to, you and I are getting older, we don't want to, you know, that's going to be 20, 30 years away. Do you believe in free will asked at a Republican debate? But at a Democratic debate with Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, I think we're about five years away from that question being asked. And it's up to you and me and the universe and whoever's watching this to get this going I think it could be asked within five years, not 30. The Republicans are so far behind with the religion. They'll, if the moderator asked that at a Republican primary debate, they would say, I don't even know. Of course, there's free will. You know, that's a ridiculous question. You should be fired, basically, from asking such a, you know, Trump would just go crazy. Of, you know, you, we need better moderators. It's the dumbest question. But the biggest elephant in the room is the six-word six question, do you believe in free will? And I think the way Bernie Sanders talks and Hillary to some degree, it could be asked within five years. That's all it's going to take. The next go around, maybe four, you know, the next, if we can get this show and get someone you know, we know to write an article, to get CNN, get the hour show on MNN, I think it could be asked pretty soon. And then once the genie's out of the bottle, it's going to be a debate show on CNN with the world leaders. Do we have free will? All right. To so leave I, the Republicans out of this. Well, no, here's the thing. I, mean, I not, agree with uh, Let's go in the direct. Let's bark Nick, up the wait right a minute, tree, which wait is a the minute. Democrats. All right. I agree with you. I fully agree with you that within five years, we may get this question. Let's do four because the debates will be four, four. years. Okay. Here. So within the next, you know, presidential election, we we're gonna, may. You and I well, are going to make sure. Yeah. Okay. So like, so the Democrats get it, but we're not letting the, the Republicans off the hook. In other words, like the Republicans have been denying climate change for several decades. And like, but that doesn't mean we should let them off the hook. We have to, we have to basically hold both parties. Yeah, but in 2020, once the Republicans start campaigning, they're going to use that against the Democrats. They're going to say, we're the, we're the party that believes in free will, and those liberals don't. I mean, that's crazy. Of course, so they're, going to, they're never going to get it, but they're going to actually use it and then it's going to be divisive. But. Okay, let me ask you something. Like, you know, the Republican, well, this, it's interesting. Like, well, I like the fact that you're calling out politicians to lead us. Absolutely. Because I could argue philosophy professors in college teachers in third grade, psychiatrists, lawyers, uh, judges, you're saying politicians should and, come out and, first? And, yes, and, and, and not just, again, not just Democrats, Republicans. Like, let's go back through history. Um, today, if anyone asked most Republicans whether we should repeal Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, most of them would probably say no. Why? Because our, our society has shifted that it, it, would be, it would be absolutely insane and irresponsible for them to defend that we should, like, eliminate this, this safety net, right? So now that's an example of, like, you know, years ago before FDR, the Republicans were deeply entrenched in not giving, those, you know, society, those people, those benefits, that, mm -hmm. that safety net. They shifted. So in other words, yes, they, they have a position now related to... to uh, individual responsibility and that everyone has free will and all, but they, just like all of us, are amenable to change. And the way we, we do that is like, fine, they may not change as quickly as the Democrats, as quickly as other people, but they, will, they can change also. And so we, we basically have to, in other words, like, we have to make it difficult for them to challenge a Democrat who says we don't have a free will. In other words, like, the, the, Dem the Republicans will say, well, climate change isn't happening. That, that is such a dangerous, you mm -hmm. know, absurd um, position. Just as we challenge them on that, we have to challenge them on this free will thing. Okay, but back to what you were saying. Do you believe that politics and politicians should be the leaders of this no free will movement? 
or should it be ministers, Pat? Well, they're never going to, I mean, does, should it come from religion? Should it come from education? Should it come from the legal system? Should it come from the mental health system? You're theorizing here today on the show that you're saying politicians have a duty and an obligation to lead us in reality. And you know why? You know why I say not that? Not just economic policy and not just international diplomacy, reality. Yes, but you know why I say that? First of all, I mean, like, the, the politicians follow the science. In other words, like, if the science unequivocally understands that we don't have free will. Well, Republicans don't follow the science. They're, no, no, they I'm believe not saying, in the Bible I'm not and saying none that, of that is scientific. I'm not saying that they, they do. I'm saying that they should. In other words, well, like, Democrats. this, no, this is, this is uh, fundamentally, let's return back to the gay rights issue. This is a, a, an issue of human rights. You know, the Republicans and a lot of Democrats, it's not just the Republicans that are doing this, a lot of politicians on both sides of the aisle are denying the gay community these rights because they are blaming them for being gay because they're, they're saying, you know, of their free will, they chose to be gay and they're like, they're um, basically... Um, you know, just denying their responsibility. So, so, so essentially it's our politicians' role to create a much more equitable, fair society. That's why they should be championing this. They should be like championing the, the rights of, of gay people to marry, to, to visit their partners in, in, in hospitals and all. Mm -hmm. But again, you're saying politicians should be leading this. Uh, since nobody's bringing it up at the debates, there's, there's a vacuum and it's you and I doing this on cable access. I don't see professors at colleges refuting free will because the parents of those kids, the kids are gonna come home from Christmas break and say, I learned a philosophy class at Yale that there's no free will and I can go do whatever I want because it's not up to me. And the parents are gonna call the school and say, how you know, it's at any level of school. So that's not gonna work. Plus philosophy professors at college, they wanna present both sides, you know, so you can think for yourself. Well, They're not gonna all flatly deny and refute Free will. So then we have teachers. They'll get in too much trouble. What about judges? All right. Well, forget judges because uh, let's, let's, let's no, no, I'm not forget them. But like we have to go um, step by step. Let's take, for example, the case of evolution with Darwin. Darwin introduces evolution to the world. The scientific community gets it. You know, in the year or two after he introduced it, the public school system did not suddenly start teaching evolution. It takes time. So in other words, like you and I and our, our associates are actually introducing the world to the, not just to the, to the fact that, that free will is an illusion, but to the fact that this illusion is extremely harmful, right? So as the, the knowledge that we're imparting gets disseminated throughout society, then yes, then it's up to the politicians to apply this knowledge, you know, to the educational system, to the criminal justice system, and it's up to religion to have a second reformation you know they they had the reformation from catholicism you know the protestant reformation mm -hmm. now it's time for them to understand that god's will controls everything <laughs> god mitch is going to hate that uh so you're saying the scientific community has to lead this revolution of consciousness well certainly and and, and like we're, so we're, you and i are in the scientific so is sam harris oh absolutely so the job of the scientific community is to convince the candidates that this is something that needs to be talked about and real, just like climate change. And that's why... But the Republicans don't listen to the scientists. So you're 30, 30 years away or 50 well, years away. Well, you know, there, there was a time when... Because the like, whole religious thing isn't scientific, and they love to believe in Adam and Eve and parting the Red Sea and uh, Noah's Ark and all those stories. There was a Genesis time... Genesis and I whatnot. Hear you, yeah, so, so let's focus on the Democrats. What, well, no, wait. Because, like, right. you have to understand, the Republicans, to a great extent, are the problem. Because a lot of Democrats are afraid to come out with this because they're afraid of being attacked by the Republicans. Fine, so now, in what, four years, I'm going to storm, let's I'm go back, storm a, let's go back a primary history. debate and just say, let, do we have free no, will? No, let's go back. You should. Let's go back to history. <laughs> it's not like, happening. The Republicans, there was a time when people worked seven days a week, okay? Now, the union movement, which was supported by the Democratic Party, said, wait a minute, this is insane. You know, life is about, it's not just about work and toil and all. So, like, because of this, we now have weekends. We have Saturday and Sunday off, and the Republicans were vehemently opposed to this in the past. There are so many issues where the Republicans were opposed and then like through force of reason. So through people like us, you know, explaining the, the necessity, the, the, the benefits of, of various kinds of changes, the Republicans, you know, got on, on board. So basically, you know, we have to attack the Republicans on this. Again, they don't have a free will. We're not going to blame them, but we have to attack them because they are a great part of the reason why the Democrats don't talk about it. The Democrats are afraid to because the Republicans are going to say, well, you know, like... So un-American. Exactly. 
So okay. again, so like, so like, not, let's not, not just focus on um, um, Car Carson. How about um, the Democrats? How about what does Clinton think about this? What does um, Sanders think about this? I think especially Sanders, he he's so anti-income inequality that he sounds like a communist uh, socialist, but I think he gets it. I think he, if you really sat down with him and said, you know, there's no free will, we should all be more, making more or less the same. There shouldn't be a huge gap in income. It could be a slight gap, you know, where maybe you outlaw anyone earning over a million dollars a year and everybody's taxed. I mean, I'm just coming up, you know, so there's nobody richer than, you know, making a million dollars a year and then... There's no taxes for people earning less than a million. So if you make nine million, you got to pay eight million. And I'm just coming up. You know, he gets that there shouldn't be a huge inequality where there's a one percent right. or even point oh. Even, let's stay with the gay thing. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I think all social issues, Democrats understand. There's no free will. All right. So among among all the candidates running for president today, Sanders is probably the the one who is courageous enough, who's who's enlightened enough. Who's, who's responsible enough to champion this belief. I would love to hear his answer if you said, Mr. Sanders, do you believe in free will? Ms. Clinton, Mrs. Clinton, do you believe in free will? I would love, I would pay anything to hear that conversation. Anything. Okay, well, again, that's why we're doing the show and we're doing two See, more episodes like after Trump, this. If you say to him, do you believe, you know, he's, he's immediately uh, vulnerable and feels attacked because he doesn't want to be robbed of all his personal accomplishments, which he says is so great, because he takes credit for his names on it. So he could say, well, God's important to me and God helped me, but he believes deep down that he and God work together and he owes a lot of it to God, but not all of it, because he will be, his ego is so big. He all right, want we've to got like, about a minute okay, left. Sorry, all right, sorry, so yeah. like, I don't want let's to talk about our Manhattan show. We, uh, every other week or so, we're live, explain, um, talk about you know, our, our show in Manhattan to the entire Manhattan community. Well, right now you're watching this show, believe it or not, it's taped in White Plains. I, I run it in Manhattan, but we like to be live every other week so you're going to get a tape show with George and I here in White Plains, like a tutorial. And then next week, sometimes we take two weeks off, but keep tuning in. It's called Free Will Live, as you can see on your channel. Guide. We, we sit around and take your phone calls and debate whether or not we have free will. Excellent. Okay, like on, on the Internet, go to causalconsciousness.com, exploring the illusion of free will. We have like 193 episodes of this show on there. Every month in Manhattan, the first Saturday of each month, we hold a public discussion debate on this. It's in the Sony uh, mm. Plaza, uh, Madison Avenue, 550 Madison Avenue, between 5th and, and Madison. All right, that's all we have time for tonight. tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again to explain to you why free will is, is, is an illusion Zero. and why this matters profoundly.